senator is saying goodnight to his grandson, but he'll be joining us shortly. All right, cowboy. The time you got to bed and I got back to my guest. Come on, Grandpa, just a few more minutes. No, that's what you said ten minutes ago. Okay. Love you, Grandpa. Your dad will look in on you in a minute. Remember, tomorrow's the big picnic. I'll remember. Good night, my boy. Good night, Grandpa. How's our party going, Angie? Everyone seems to love it. Marvelous. Just exactly what I needed. Thank you. I I thought you were going to take Jody to bed, Dad. That's just what I did. Well, he's not in his room. I was just there. Always shut. Get everyone in the house and spread out. It couldn't have happened more than a couple of minutes ago. Maybe we can still stop them. Go over there. Lee, get back behind those buildings. Come on, Ellie. Jody! Jody! Jody, what happened? I hurt my foot. Well, can you can you run, huh? Yeah. But it might hurt. Oh, well, you've really done it now. Angela, leave us alone, please. It's Jody, Jody, Dada, don't be a fool. Angela. You better call the police, Sally. All right. Tell them my grand. Tell them Jody may have been kidnapped. All right, Dad. Listen. No publicity. Jody, I, I have to leave you somewhere for a while. But I know you're going to like the people here and you'll have fun, okay? Sure, whatever you say, Mom. I sure did miss you, Jody. I missed you too, Mom. Dad told me you'd gone away for good. Not for good. And you know what? I promise you that nothing ever will come between us again. Okay? Because I love you. I love you too, Mom. Thank you very much. My client feels that Mr. Upworth's suit is based not on any real concern that Mr. Bridger's tool shed is on his land, but rather that this suit springs from ill will. Mr. Bridger is ordered to move the structure. But, Your Honor... The ruling stands. This case dismissed. Hello, Counselor. How'd it go? Terrific. I'm lucky I wasn't just barred. You lost the case? Yeah, and the fee. <laughs> How do you lose a fee? Well, Bridget's exact words were, uh, 
You can sue me, but the way you handle that case, I'd win, son, quote. Well, I know a good lawyer I can get you. Does he work cheap? Well, he always handled my action very reasonably. Hey, I'm not going to touch that line with a 10-foot pole. Well, in that case, uh, I'll get down to business. What? Uh, Zazu O'Brien, the stripper. Yeah? She phoned. Is she busted again? And she wants to know if she can get a restraining order against the judge who issued a restraining order against her. Next. Mr. Levine. Uh, he came by, and he brought the salami and the nail, and he said you could take it from there. <laughs> Wait a minute. One more thing. I'm listening. I'm listening. A woman. She phoned and wanted to know if you would meet her at La Fontana Bar. You'd ask for Donna. Why couldn't you come by the office? I don't know, but she wouldn't. And Tony, she sounds like she's in real trouble. Donna? Mr. Petricelli? Yeah, that's right. Um, could you sit down for a minute, please? Look, if this is if this is business, I've got an office. If it isn't, uh, I've got a wife. Uh, it's business. I'm sorry, but I I just couldn't take a chance coming to your office today. Why is there somebody looking for you? Uh, yes, about half of the San Remo police force. Mm. Why so popular? Uh, kidnapping. Lady, that is out of my league. I'm... No, I need your help. Look, I, I can't help you with that kind of thing. That is something for the FBI. He's my own son. How do you go about kidnapping your own son? I lost legal right to him. But you see, I love him, so I stole him. And, and, and what, do, what do you want me to do about this? can help me keep him. Why did you lose custody in the first place? Does that really matter? Oh, yeah, 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 it matters. The courts almost always award the child to the mother unless he's judged unfit. Why, is that what happened? No, that's not what happened. I just didn't fight for him. Why not? Because I never had the chance. Because I guess I took the easy way out. Because I was afraid of the old man. Wait a second, Helen. You're, um, you're losing me now. Now, what old man? I'm talking about my father-in-law, Senator Linville McCaslin. McCaslin? Yeah. Yeah, he's a heavyweight, all right. But why me? I mean, I'm not exactly in the high-rent district. I guess that's why, because you're you're new here, and I thought maybe you wouldn't be afraid of the senator. And everybody else is, huh? Yes. At least I am. Mm. So can you help me? Even if I wanted to, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Freeze right there. Are you Donna McCaslin? Yes. You, slide out of there without using your hands. What the hell is going on around here? Move. Turn around. Turn around. Miss, you just sat there real still. Mrs. McCaslin, you're under arrest. You got the right to remain silent. You got the right to have an attorney present during questioning. She's got an attorney present, me, Anthony Petricelli. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. No, it's not okay. What are you guys kidding? Coming in here with those drawn pistols? This is a simple custody case. Look, I don't know anything about a custody case, Counselor. This lady's wanted for murder. What? I didn't kill anyone. Don't say anything. Who's the victim? A lady by the name of Angela Gilmart, Senator McCaslin's secretary. Please. You just, um, you go along with them. I'll get down to see you as soon as I can. Come on, miss. Come on.
Maggie? She's not here. She went out shopping. She left your calls here on the desk. Oh, yeah? What's that? Trying to figure out how much money I'd have if I ever got paid around here. Well, better that I owe you than you giving it to half the bartenders in America. And if you can stop counting the money I owe you for just a half a minute, I want you to go out there and start digging. Digging where? Senator Linville McCaslin. Why not somebody tough? And his son. And the secretary who's no longer with us, a uh, lady by the name of uh, Gil Martin. Anything else? Yeah. His ex-daughter-in-law, Donna McCaslin. OK. How much do you want on? Everything, up to and including the laundry list. What are you tied into this time, Tony? Well, nothing much, Pete. Just kidnapping and murder. As long as it isn't anything serious. I'll get this as fast as I can. thing I need to know from you is the truth. That's the only way I can help you. What do you want to know? Did you kill her? No. But it seems I had plenty of reason to, but I didn't. Why don't you give me a few of those, huh? After the divorce, I left Sam Remo for a year. I just couldn't bear to be so close to Jody and not be able to see him. I came back a couple of weeks ago. I phoned the senator to tell him that I wanted Jody back again. But I couldn't get past her. I mean, she screens all of his calls. I couldn't even see him in person. Why'd you call the senator? Why not your husband? That wouldn't have done any good. He doesn't change clothes without the senator's approval. You married him without the senator's approval? Yes, and I live to regret it. The senator's never forgiven me for that. Alec isn't a bad man. He's just very weak. The senator's too much for him to handle. He's too much for anyone to handle. Okay, next. Who was your accomplice? Now, listen, I want to know the truth. And the police said they found footprints on the ground where you got out. He was just a man I hired. A private detective. His name was Carew. Did he help you get Jody out? No, I didn't need his help for that. I know that house. Getting Jody in and out of there was easy. I didn't think they'd discover he was gone until morning, but they did. Hey, hey, come on and go over there. Lee, get back behind those buildings. Come on, Alec. Even so, we had a head start until Jody tripped and he stubbed his toe. Jody, what happened? Then we had to sit down until it stopped hurting. And that's where we were when Angela showed up. You've really done it now. Angela, leave us alone, please. Oh, you were always invincibly stupid, Donna, but this time you've outdone yourself. You seem to forget that this is my son. He's Senator McCaslin's grandson, which you ought to know takes precedence. You leave my mom alone. You get back to the house. Jody at once. No, I don't like it here. I want to go with my mom. Jody, you just walk toward my car straight ahead, and I'll be there in just a minute, all right? Go ahead. It's Jody! Jody, Donna, don't be a fool! Angela, please! She didn't scream. I guess I knocked the wind out of her. It wasn't enough to really... to really hurt her, let alone kill her. Well, she sure didn't go in for a midnight swim. You mean she drowned? Yeah, that's what they claim. But she was still sitting there when we left. What do you mean, we? Jody and me. And he saw it happen? I suppose so. Then he could verify her testimony. That means I'd have to produce him, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, you can count on that. Don't you know what would happen? The senator would try to take him away from me again. I gave him up once. I won't do it again. Look, Mrs. McCaslin, that doesn't you make any... You don't seem to understand. Maybe if you're a mother, you would. Look, I understand that. If I were a cop, though, I'd think that not producing Jody would mean that he couldn't confirm your story. Well, there has to be another way. Well, there is. You could stand trial for murder.
tell Bob if you see him to me. Mr. McCasland? Yeah. My name is Petrick Shelley. I, uh, like to talk to you. All right. Hey, listen, you go on in. I'll be with you in a minute. I'm your, uh, I'm your wife's lawyer. My ex-wife. Your ex-wife, I'm sorry. Anyway, I do want to talk to you about you and Donna. All right, what do you want? I don't know why you and she got divorced. It didn't work, that's all. She didn't fit into our lives. Wait a second. When you say when you when you say our lives, you mean you and the senator? No. Yeah, maybe I do. Look, she just couldn't accept things the way they were. Well, how were they? Look, Mr. Petricelli, isn't it enough? It just didn't work. We're not the only couple that ever got divorced. Well, that's true, but uh, but you got custody of a boy. That's right. Well, that's what I really want to know. I want to know why she gave up Jody. I'd like to say I had something to do with it, Mr. Petricelli, but I didn't. She and the senator worked it out. Jody was the apple of the senator's eye. He could care less if we got divorced. But he wasn't about to lose the kid. When you say the kid, you mean your son. Mr. Petricelli, I guess maybe you don't think very much of me. That's all right, because I don't think very much of myself. But I am what I am. I'd like to change, but I can't. You've never had to go up against the senator, have you? Well, I have. I can't beat him. Why do you have to beat him? He's your father. No. What he is is my son's grandfather. Look. When you see Donna, tell her I'm sorry. I'm sorry things worked out this way for her. Yeah, I'll do that. And I may not be much help, but tell her if she really needs me. I'll try. Mr. Levine, he says you should take the salami and the nail back to the deli and either get your money back or a new salami. Goodbye, Mr. Levine. Hi. Hi. Your second biggest case. Oh, terrific. <laughs> Name from Pete? Uh, lots of juicy stuff. Mm -hmm. Like what? Well, it seems the uh, senator and Miss Gilmartin were more than Boston secretary. Meaning? Well, according to Pete's sources, uh, there were rumors of a red-hot marriage. Oh, it sounds like there's a butt somewhere. Uh, lately, the senator was so wrapped up in Jody that, well, nothing more came of it. Mm. Well, she would have been all that choked up if Donna had gotten Jody. That's what it sounds like. There's uh, something strange there. Huh? You know what else is strange? I know. I, I've got a feeling you're going to tell me. Well, what is strange is you love me so madly, yet you resist the impulse to kiss me. That's right. It is strange. Oh, you keep that up. You two are going to have to get married. Hmm? Oh, what a dynamite idea. Okay, Mr. Matchmaker, what do you got? Well, I, I got something dull, and I got something interesting. Okay, bore me first, huh? The senator, he's a rock of Gibraltar. If anybody knows anything, they're not saying anything. Yeah. His son, Alec, is a lightweight. Yeah. He's scared to death of the senator, but he's a, he's a pretty good kid. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I know that already. Okay, give me the interesting stuff. The late Angela Gilmartin, she's interesting. Yeah, interest me. Go ahead. Well, before she went to work for the senator, she was a little cozy with a friend of mine, a private investigator. Whose name wouldn't by chance be, uh, Carew. Doggone it. How'd you know that, Tony? Well, he was hired by Donna McCaslin. And what do you have to say? Well, I don't know. I haven't seen him yet. He's my next stop. OK, look, something more important. Now, Donna's hiding that boy somewhere out in San Remo. Now, she's not going to say where. I want you to find out who her friends are, who she grew up with, because somebody she could trust to leave that kid, but she's going to do it. That's going to be... That's impossible. Right? Huh? Well, all right, I'll try, but it's going to be very difficult. It's, it's not an easy thing, Tony. Pete! If it were easy, I'd do it. Uh, that was Mr. Bridger on the phone. He is still dissatisfied, but he is willing to pay the fee. I was just thinking about that. And? I'd like to have your fireplace made out of used bricks. And the patio. Secondhand brick? No, 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 I didn't say that. 
Not second hand. Used bricks. You know they cost more than new bricks and they're more in demand? They're like, uh, they're like wine. And they've got a rich, mellow freshness to them. Sounds nice. Expensive? It depends if you have a dissatisfied client. <laughs> got my message. That's right. Didn't waste no time coming out here to collect. <laughs> Mr. Bridger, you do me an injustice. Well, I see this is the this is the shed that caused the big problem, huh? Yep, yep. Well, I see despite my persuasive arguments, you are still 15 feet on your neighbor's property. Yep. It ain't moved. Yeah, well, that's what the judge said you had to do with it, though. And that's, uh, that's move it. That's right. Well, since you've got to tear down the building and um, I have a need for used bricks, in lieu of a fee, I'll tear down your building and take the bricks. How's that? Don't know. Them brick might be worth a lot. I'd uh, best go figure out how much I got in them. Sure thing. I'm Jody McCaslin. Yeah, well, so, so do I. Where is he? Yeah, I don't know. One more time, where's the boy? Hey, what is it with you guys? <laughs> Pepper Charlie? Yeah, that's right. What do you want? I want you, or a piece of you, for sticking those goons on me. What are you talking about? I'm talking about assault and battery. I'm talking about intent to commit bodily harm. That's what I'm talking about, Senator. And you think I'm responsible for whatever it was that happened to you? Yeah, that's just what I think. Anybody with a nickel's worth of brains know you want Jody, you'll do anything to get him back here. Let me tell you something, Petrocelli. I don't need people to do my dirty work for me. I'm still man enough to do that myself, if I have to. Like it took a big man to get Donna to sign Jody over to your son. Huh? Like whatever it takes to get what I want. No, not this time, Senator. Uh-uh. I think you're going to be in for a pretty big letdown. You know, I've heard about you, Petrocelli. I heard you're good and you're tough, and I like that. I was a lawyer once myself a long time ago. And I was good. And I've got half a mind to take you on in court myself, just to see if you're near as good as you seem to think you are. But coming in here and threatening me for having you beaten up, why, in a court of law, I'd chew you to pieces. And there's a witness you better chew up too, Senator. What witness? Herman Bridger. You see, it happened at his farm. Good old Herm. I'm sure he mentioned to you that I hold a mortgage on his farm. He probably wouldn't make a good witness at all. And another thing. 
It may have been that some of my friends thought they'd get in my good graces by finding the boy and bringing him back here. I had nothing to do with that. But I love Jody. And there's nothing I won't do to get him back. But well, just where it's going to stop. You see, Donna loves him, too. And she's his mother, and he belongs with her. And anything that I can do to make that happen, I will. the license number? Funny guy. These are the messages. Oh, uh, Charlie Waller, the assistant DA. He'd like you to meet him in his office. Okay. Oh, and uh, Donna McCaslin. She grew up with four close female friends here. Three of them left the state. That leaves a one. Rafaela Garcia. She lives at 6432 Brian Kent Road. You want me to check her out? No, no, Pete. Now, it's followed out to Bridgers. Uh, evidently, they figured that uh, I'd lead him to Jody. So they still may be following you and me. I'll go to see Waller. You better check out uh, Buck Carew. And you go to see if Jody's that Miss Garcia's, huh? Maggie, here's your dress. Thanks, Pete. I'll drop you at the courthouse. Okay. Okay. I'm a reasonable man, Tony. Tell me, why should we drop the charge? What if I told you that she had a witness? Who? Suppose I said it was his son. All right. Bring him into the office. If his testimony is conclusive, I'll drop the charge. Fair enough? Look, Charlie, I don't know where he is. If Donna knows she won't say, unless she gets a personal guarantee that the boy will be returned to her. Come on. Tony, you know I can't do that. <laughs> well, Charlie, I don't want you to go to trial with egg on your face. I don't think I will. You see, we now have a little clearer picture of what really happened down by that pool. <laughs> Several people were searching the grounds. Senator McCaslin, his son Alec, and various guests, as well as Angela Gilmore. And unfortunately, she's the one that caught up with Mrs. McCaslin. For the boy's sake, I hope he didn't see what happened next. Two women fought like alley cats. Then Donna McCaslin picked up a weapon, the boy's bat. And she drowned. But it was the blow that caused it. And your client's fingerprints were all over the murder weapon. Strands of leather ripped from Donna's jacket were still clutched in the victim's hand. You put all that together, Tony, and it spells murder. Cop, please. We're into the preliminary hearing tomorrow. Tony, she's going to get nailed if you don't. Charlie, she didn't do it. And I'm going to find a way to prove that. Well, they offered us a deal. You could go for second degree. But I didn't do it. Look, Donna, without Jody, I'm the only person in that court you were going to convince of that. And that's not enough. Well, there'll have to be another way. But there isn't, Donna. What good do you think it's going to do either of you with you rotting in jail? Look, I know you don't understand why I gave him up. But part of the reason was that I knew he would have every advantage a child could have. Money, position, everything. And it made it a lot easier to know that he could have all those things that I couldn't give him. And then I finally realized that what he really needed was me and not all those things. And that he would grow up just like his father in the shadow of the senator. And now I know he's happy. Even if he's without me, he's happy. It's a lot better than him being up on that hill. OK, one more thing. How'd you happen to hire Buck Carew? 
Does that matter? Yes. Everything matters. Well, it was really very strange. I mean, I was in town a couple of days, and um, I ran into him. He introduced himself. And uh, he said something odd. Yeah. He said that he knew what a rotten deal I'd gotten from the senator, and if I'd come back to town to do something about it, that he could help me. No, was that after you talked to Angela on the phone? Yes, why? Because there was a time that Angela and Carew lived together. You mean she put him in touch with me? Uh-huh. So why did she try to stop me? I think it was an act, because if you did get picked up and told your story, then she looked pretty good in the eyes of a senator. But there's one thing she didn't count on. Yes? Ending up dead in the pool. <laughs> I'm Maggie Petruccelli, and I'm looking for a Mrs. Garcia. Rafaela Garcia? Yes. Oh, then you were in school with Donna McCaslin. Uh, I don't know her maiden name, but she later married Alex McCaslin, the senator's son. Donna Moorhead, that was her name in college. Well, then you were good friends. Well, I knew her well in high school, but not so well afterwards. She moved up there, and uh, we didn't see each other much after that. Those aren't all yours. Some, yes, and some neighbors. Uh, Donna only had one. Did you ever meet Jody? No. Never. Mrs. Garcia, you probably know Donna is in jail, charged with murder. My husband is her attorney, and we're trying to help her. But I need to talk to Jody right away. I don't know where he is. How did you know Jody was a boy? Please, if you know where he is, help us. I wish Donna well. Tell her that, please. But I don't know anything about her child. Is that your football, Jody? Nope. I bet you have one at home, though, right? Yeah, Grandpa never bought me stuff like that. Do you like your Grandpa? Sure, I like him fine. But there's no kids to play with. And he's always making me do stuff. Like what? Ah, uh, you know, wash up, keep clean, change your clothes all the time. Well, you sure are dirty now. <laughs> yeah, ain't I? Yeah. And you know what? No, what? I didn't change my clothes wet today. You didn't? Nope. Now that my mom's back, me and she are gonna do all kinds of neat stuff. I'm glad, Jody. You know, I met your mother. Really? When is she coming to see me? Well, real soon, I hope. But she wanted me to tell you that she misses you and loves you very much. I miss her, too. That was real fun that night. All that running, hiding stuff. I really liked that. Jody, tell me. Did you have fun with Mrs. Gilmartin, too? That was the funniest thing of all. When Mom poked her in the stomach. I wish you'd seen the way she sat down. I wish I had. Tell me, did, did, what happened after Mrs. Gilmartin sat down? Hey, Jody, come on. Lady, can I go play now? Uh, Jody, did you leave Mrs. Gilmartin sitting? Yeah. Can I go play now? Yeah, go play now. And I further understand Mrs. McCaslin and the deceased frequently fought. That is right. Just for the record, Senator, Angela Gilmartin was your executive secretary. That was her title. 
It covered a multitude of virtues. She was also my good right arm and my last line of defense. And she often provided the woman's touch necessary in the upbringing of my grandson, Jody. And that was after your daughter-in-law left your home? And before, whenever Angela could be of service. Did Mrs. McCaslin resent this? There was some friction, I suppose. Donna was under a strain. Her marriage was failing. Would you say it was a contributing factor? No. No, she and her husband had been having difficulties before I brought them into my home. I had hoped that would help. It didn't. And so the only solution was divorce? A solution, which also presented a problem, how to protect the boy from his parents. But wasn't there a custody fight? No. Donna relinquished all claims to Jody for $10,000. She took it and left San Remo. All right, so I took the money. So what? So what? Well, why didn't you tell me? It puts a different light on everything. Why? It looks like you just flat out sold your kid. Look, he had me down and beaten. He threatened me with everything under the sun. He offered me the money, so I took it and I ran. I'm ashamed of it, but that's what I did. Now, look. Without Jody, we don't have much going for us, but I've got one shot left. I'm going to put you on the stand, and you're going to tell it like it is. If you leave anything out, your zip code could be the state pen. Now, maybe, just maybe, it'll open up some eyes. So you admit you took the money to turn your son over to his father? Yes. Why? Because I had no choice. Yes, you did. You, you could have fought them. I tried. But not hard enough. I did try. But there was a wall of them between Jody and me. Nursemaids, butlers, Angie, and the senator. And he threatened to drag me through the courts and told me he had the power to take Jody away from me. And, uh, Maybe I let myself believe that, that he'd be better without me. I mean, they did have everything. And uh, I didn't have anything. So I sold my baby. Then you, you left San Remo. And you lived on the $10,000? No, no not, a, not a penny of it. I couldn't do that. It's all still on the bank. Why did you come back to San Remo? I had to see my baby. I mean, I, I couldn't live any longer. Without seeing my child. And what did you intend to do? I was going to give the money back. If they would just... Let me see Jody again. If... You know, if I could just be with him. But I, I couldn't even talk to him. I mean, I couldn't even talk to him on the phone. So you decided to get Jody back any way you could. So I went to the house that night and I, and I took him. I took him because I love him. He loves me. And because he needs me, but I, sw I swear before God, I, I never killed Angela. This court will recess for 30 minutes.
nothing for you here. Mr. Petrocelli, I don't blame you. Matter of fact, I'm not too proud of myself just now. But I am sorry. I guess maybe I never even thought of you as a as a person with real feeling. Now I think I know how much I really hurt you. And I am sorry. I guess I've just spent too many years proud of being me. I've always got everything I ever wanted. If I didn't own it, I bought it. Then that changes your point of view. I should have known that the one thing you can't buy and sell is love. say is I'm willing to drop the kidnap charges against you. If you want to bring the boy here to testify for you, I won't try and get him back. I guess I knew he really was yours all along. Just, just maybe we arrange for me to see him once in a while. Jody, don't be nervous. I'm not nervous, sir. Well, then, in your own words, Jody, why don't you try to tell us just what happened that night? Where do you want me to start? Well, perhaps where you first saw your mother. OK. Jody. She was waiting in my room, and she said, would I like to play a game of hide and seek? So I said, sure, and we climbed out the window. It was, we was running, I stubbed my toe, and we sat by the pool till it got better. I hurt my foot. Well, you think you can run? Yeah, but it might hurt. Well, let's try, OK? You've really done it now. Only then, Miss Gilmartin come up, and she wanted to stop the game. But Mama wouldn't let her. Angela, leave us alone, please. back to the house. Jody at once. No, I don't like it here. I'm going to go with my mom. Jody, you just walk toward my car straight ahead, and I'll be there in just a minute, all right? They got mad. And mom hit her right in the stomach. And it was real funny the way Miss Gilmartin sat down on the chair. May I, Your Honor? Certainly. So, Jody, uh, you and your mother just ran. And the last time you saw Miss Gilmartin, she was just sitting by the pool. No, that wasn't the very last thing. Then what was, Jody? Well, when we was running, I lost my slipper. Come on. And when I turned back to get it, I saw Miss Gilmartin get up. She started to run, and she slipped and did a jump right in the pool. Jody. Do you mean that Miss Gilmartin, all by herself, fell into the pool? Yes, sir, she sure did. According to the police report, the bat was found in the pool. So she must have hit her head on it when she fell into the pool and drowned. Your Honor, it is clear from this evidence that there was no murder at all, that Angela Gilmartin met her death purely by accident. And with Senator McCaslin's agreement not to press charges, 
I move that the case against Miss McCaslin be dismissed. Mr. Waller? The people would agree, Your Honor. And so moved. This case is dismissed. <laughs> Does that mean we're going to be together again, Mom? Yes, it does, Jody. collecting the fee. What you're doing is heading for a lawsuit. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, me and Cliff next door couldn't figure out what to do, so I decided to sell Cliff this building, and that's what I done. You decided to Well, what about my fee? Well, I figure if you'll forget about your fee, I won't tell Cliff what you've done to his building. OK, what do we do now? Well, I need to find myself a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> 